hi everyone, my name is Pedro. I'm an assistant professor at the Federal University of Rio Grande in Brazil. I'm here to present to you our joint work with some folks from CADA and University of California, San Diego at the United States, University of Waikato in New Zealand and the Max Planck for in in Institute for Informatics in Germany. And our works about something that you are probably very well familiar with. It's about AS path prepending. And the reason that we decided that we should study path prepending is because it one of the most deployed uh, inbound traffic engineering techniques for by the network operators. If we check the evolution of prepending over the last 10 years, we can see that there is a slightly increase from 2010 to 2020, with today approximately 30% of the ASs are using path prepending somehow, either when they are originating their own prefixes or when they are redistributing prefixes that are adver advertised by other ASs. But the most common case is to pre uh, prepending when originating prefixes. And if we check, for example, the use of path prepending in IPv4 prefixes and addresses, we can see two things. First one is that all prefixes and addresses are prepended to at least a given part of the internet. But most of those cases are because there are some large ASs that prepend the prefixes before redistributing them. So there are like tier ones that prepend all the prefixes before redistributing to a given customer. That's why all pre uh, prefixes are prepended. But if we look at the, pre the prepends by the originator, what we can say is that 25% of the IPv4 prefixes are being prepended for, by the prefix originator. So, so they already started prepend when they get to the internet. And while prepending is a widely deployed technique, there also has been some controversy about e its utilization. There has been some blog posts about the security implications of path prepending. Last year, Doug Mather from Oracle pointed out that excessive BHP AS path prepending is a self-inflicted vulnerability to the ASs. We also know about reports in the past where a uh, path with 252 uh, prepends caused routers to crash. And we there is also voices from the community as Randy that is saying that, okay, we should use more specifics to steer our inter-domain traffic and not prepending at all for doing that. And while we see that there is like uh, good points in both sides, we also know that the use of more specifics could not be like an option for all the ASs today because we are running out of IPv4 prefixes and the newer ASs were getting only slashes 24, which in theory, we can de-aggregate them to announce our prefixes in a more specific manner. But we, we are also aware that there are many ASs that filter prefixes that are more specific than slash 24. So more specifics not a suitable solution in all the cases. So the goal of our research is to contribute to an informal discussion about path prepending without taking any sides. At the end, I will provide some takeaways from our research, but we did our research without taking any sides if prepending something good or bad for the internet. And in this talk, we will cover path prepending considering three different aspects. The first one is the deployment. At the beginning, I showed you some numbers about the deployment of path repenting in the past 10 years. We, I will show some other numbers in the next slides. We also checked about the effectiveness of path prepending as a traffic engineering tool. You probably know the answer for this uh, question, but as researchers, we had to do it, that also to answer that question. And at the end, we analyzed the security implications for the internet routing. And then we try to put everything together with some takeaways uh, of our research. And to perform our research, what we did is that we used BGP data from route views, RIPE RIS, and the Isolario project 
And for some active measurements using actual uh, BGP prefixes, what we did is that we used the peering test bed to advertise some of our prefixes and evaluate how prepend propagates on the internet or if we can hijack a prefix that is prepended. And so starting with the deployment of path prepending, in the first slide, we observed that prepending is a widely deployed uh, traffic engineering technique. That's fine. And now we try to understand how the prefixes have been prepended by the ASs. So how the ASs are prepending their own prefixes. And to that end, we created a taxonomy with four different classes of prefixes that I will describe right now. First class is no, which means that that prefix has not been prepended by the prefix originator. And just to highlight here, I will only talk at this moment about uh, prepends by the prefix originator. So first class is prefix that's not prepended. We have the class about prefix that are uniformly prepended to everyone. And this is a, a curious case that we found and also that Doug pointed out last year, but we did um, more digging about this, where there is like the prefix is being advertised always with prepend and the prepend has always the same size. So it's something that awkward. There are the cases about the prefix with a binary prepending policy where the prefix has been announced with two different options, either zero and two prepends or two prepends and five prepends. And there is the more diverse class where the prefix has been advertised with at least three different prepend size, like one, two, and five. And what we did is that we checked the prepend uh, policies for all the prefixes for the past two and a half years. And here we have the results. First thing is that 75% of the prefix are not prepended by the originator, which is kind of the same result from the first plot of the second plot of my, of my presentation. That the most common policy that the ASs are employing their own prefixes is the binary one, which is the purple line in here, followed by the diverse and the uniform policies. And in this plot, I would like to highlight two different points. The first one, is that there are approximately 4% of the prefixes are being uniformly prepended to everyone by the originator. So the originator is announcing that prefix with a uniform prepending and propagating that prefix to all their neighbors with the same prepend size. And this 4% correspond to approximately 23,000 prefixes. So it's like only 4%, but on the other hand, it's 23,000 prefixes. And in the next slides, I will go into the details about those uh, cases, about the uniform prepending. And the second thing that I would like to highlight in here is that little drop in the prefix without prepend and those little spikes in the prefix with a binary or diverse policy. And that the period in what that happened is exactly the same period in what we were going into the lockdown measurement measures and people were starting working from home and then we showed the, those results to some network operators that may eventually be watching this presentation and they said that they also observed an increase in path repenting especially during live concerts concerts that were being broadcasted on the on the internet and also that ASs were requesting capacity increases for their trans providers. And we can also observe that around May, it became to the same uh, fractions that they were before uh, the outbreak of COVID. So probably the AS has increased their capacities and now everything's going back to how they were before the outbreak. So those were the two considerations that I would like to do in that plot. And now to take a deeper look into the uniform prepending cases that we have observed in the previous plot, we first want to understand if the uniform prepending is something that is consistent over time or if it's something that changes over time. And to that end, what we did is that we fixed a reference snapshot for us, which is January, 2019. 
And at that point, we took all the prefixes that were uniformly prepended in that particular snapshot, and we checked how those prefixes were prepended before that date and after that date. And we can see that for many of them, the uniform prepending condition is something that is transitory. They were uniformly prepended at a given point for some particular reason. Eventually, we were missing some data as well. But for like 12,000 prefixes, they were uniformly prepended for at least one year. So we can infer first that for some prefixes, something that's transient but for others is something that's consistent over time. And then we discuss it with some network operators to understand possible reasons for such a condition. And what we have heard from them is that one possible cause of uh, uniform prepending could be the loss of a neighbor. So I was using a binary policy and now I have only a one trans provider and I'm preparing to that trans provider. So I, I didn't change my uh, BGP configuration. That would be one possibility. The second one, especially that was something that the Brazilian operator said to us, is that there are many operators that actually didn't know how to operate PHP. So they are preparing their prefix, but they do not know why exactly they are doing that. Third one is that they are aware that they need, they do not need that prepend anymore. But since things are working, I will not change that. Fourth condition, well, fourth possible cause is that good news travel fast, bad news travel slowly. So it will be easier for traffic engineering if I prepend all my prefix and then when I need to shift traffic, I will just remove the prepends from a given path instead of adding prepends on the path that I'm not willing to use at that moment. The other possible cause would be like sibling artifacts. We found cases where two ASs belonging to the same organization were announcing the same prefix, both with uniform policies, but the prepend size was different. So actually it was like more a binary policy because for the same prefix we had two different alternatives for ASs belonging to the same organization. And the last condition that they, the last possible cause that they mentioned to us is that there could be some ASs that are ignoring the prepending, maybe due to a route optimizer. So they need to keep that prefix uniformly prepended to everyone because some ASs are ignoring the prepends and that's is how we're working for them to perform traffic engineering. Uh, also, another thing that we didn't hear is that uh, operators asked us if those prefix carry traffic or not, those that are uniformly prepended. And we checked the flow inf information in a large European IXP. And we found that there are prefixes that are uniformly prepended that are carrying multiple gigabits of traffic per second. So they are not prefix that we can ignore because they carry actual traffic in there. Um, going to the second part about the effectiveness of path, pre path prepending, in this step of our work, we, we use the peering test bed to advertise our prefixes. And to test the effectiveness of path prepending, what we did is that we use the peering test bed and for every round, we took two different pops that the peering test bed offers to us and announced our prefix without prepend in both pops. And then after 15 minutes for BGP convergence, we performed a set of ping measurements towards a set of targets and identified in which of the pops we got the response. So like 60% of our traffic are coming pop one and 40% of the traffic is coming from pop two. And then what we did is that in one of the pops, we prepended our prefix and then repeated the second and the third steps to check how many targets we were able to shift from one pop to the other by prepending one of the pops. And that's how we measure the effectiveness of path prepending in our uh, experiment.
So here I will show the results for every pair of pops that we have evaluated. So in the x-axis, we have the pop that was not prepended. And on the y-axis, we have the pop that we prepended after the first set of measurements. And here we have one cell for each of the experiments. I know that there is a lot of information in here, but the most important point that I would like to highlight is regarding the background color of each cell. What the background color of each cell shows to us is that the fraction of possibly movable targets that we were able to shift from one target, from one pop to the other by using path prepending in each scenario. So colors that are closer to yellow are scenarios where prepending was very effective and uh, colors that are closer to purple are scenarios where prepending was not that effective at all. So what we can observe, for example, is that for this particular case here in Utah, in all cases, we're not able to shift any traffic using path prepending. And this is likely related to the connectivity of that particular pop. And that in other pops, the result was diverse. For example, here we have a yellow cell where prepending was very effective, but here it was purple and here it was blue and green. Here we have other cases of yellow. So our takeaway here is that when we are well, when we were using only two different uh, locations, the effectiveness of path prepending was very dependent on the location that we were using for our experiments. And then there is another experiment where we announced our prefix using all pops. And we did the following. We prepended our prefix in all but one pop or vice versa, in none but one pop. And in those cases where we had multiple uh, location points, prepending was very effective for those cases. So our takeaway here is that if you have only two locations, two upstreams, maybe prepending will not be that effective, but if you have more than two, it's likely to be a very effective traffic engineering technique. And lastly, what we did is that uh, given that there are some concerns from the community about the security implications of path prepending, we did two analyses here. The first one, we evaluated if those security implications are practical, if we can actually hijack prefixes that are using path prepending. And then second, we analyzed how many prefix in, that in the, those particular conditions we found on the internet. So we starting first with testing the practicality of the attacks exploiting path prepending. We again use it, the peering test bed for, for our experiment. And our methodology was the following. First, we again took pairs of pops for this experiment. For each pair of pops, we announced our prefix with zero, zero prepends or one, two, and three prepends, depending on the iteration that we did. We tested all the four cases. And we waited for 15 minutes. And then we started announcing our prefix in the second pop using a different ASN as the origin as ASN for that uh, prefix. So in pop one, prefix was being announced using one ASN as the origin. And in pop two, we were using a different ASN, both ASNs belonging to the peering testbed. So we were not using ASNs from anyone. Those were the ones from the peering test bed. And what we did is that we tested or, or actually we measured for how many BGP monitors and we had at least uh, 400 monitors that we were able to access that they were adopting the hijacked alternative. So how many monitors were preferring the hijacked route? Here we have the results for that uh, this experiment, and it's another uh, tricky plot, but I will go into the details in here. We used five uh, locations for this experiment, Amsterdam, Seattle, Georgia Tech, GRNet, and Clemson. We also 
uh, here have the numbers of upstreams that were available for each of the locations. So 43 for Amsterdam, 33 for Seattle and so on. And the X axis, we have how was our original announcement? So for example, A0 means that we were advertising our prefix from Amsterdam without prepend. And then we try to hijack that prefix from one of the locations on the Y axis. C1 means that we were advertising that prefix from Clanson with one prepend and then try to hijack from one place in the y-axis that, that is listed on the y-axis. And here we have the results. The color indication indicates the fraction, the percentage of the monitors that started adopting the hijacked routes. So colors that cells that are closer to yellow are the ones where we, we succeeded more. And I would like to highlight three different aspects from this plot. The first one is that every time we were originally announcing our prefix with three prepends, the success of our hijacking was almost complete. So it was close to 100% for those cases. Second aspect is that if you are a well-connected AS, like we were in Amsterdam, we were able to hijack the prefix all the time independently of that prefix was, if that prefix was prepended or not. And lastly, if we check the case from Clanson, which is an AS that is not well connected because it has only one upstream, in all cases where the prefix was being announced with three prepends, we succeeded in hijacking the prefix. So, the takeaway here is that if you are announcing your prefix with at least three prepends, almost everyone can completely hijack you if you use three prepends. If you use one or two, it will depend on the size of the AS that is trying to do that. And again, here we were considering that our prefix was uniformly prepended. And, and we know that in many cases, or in most cases, prefix are using a binary policy or a diverse policy for their prepends. But that's partially true. Because what we did next is that we analyzed all the prefix that are prepended, and we checked the minimum prepend size for that prefix. So if a prefix is using a binary policy, and it's, used, uh, it's not prepended in one upstream and it's prepended with a size two in the other upstream, the minimum prepend size is zero. But we found many cases of a binary policy where uh, the minimum size was not zero. And that is what we are showing in this plot where we have the number of prefix that are being or were being originated in May 2020 with a, at least one, two or three or more prepends. So in total here, we have like 38,000 prefix that seems to have unnecessary prepends in their announcements. I know that this could be a result of uh, a lack of visibility of our BGP monitors. But one thing that we also did is that we spoke with operators from two large CDNs and one medium sized CDN with a uh, hundreds of interconnection points, and we ask them to provide us with answers true or false for each prefix if they were seeing something different than what we are seeing. And for like the vast majority of cases, their answer was no. They were seeing exactly what we were seeing. So we know that there could be some lack of uh, visibility in here, but for only a few cases. So first consideration here, there are a lot of prefix that are being announced with something that seems to be unnecessary. And second thing that we analyze that, okay, we know that RPKI may help us to prevent some of those attacks if the AS is not forging the originator AS in the path. I mean, sorry, if the AS is forging the originator AS. And what we try to do here is that we check it for the prefix that are not prepended, which are the, uh, the purple curve in there, 
the fraction of those prefix that are covered by row objects against the fraction of prefix that are prepended and are covered by row objects. And what we can infer from this plot is that there is no difference regarding rows and prepending if that prefix is being prepended or not. It's not the case that I know that I'm using prepend, so I will create a row object to protect my prefix because someone may try to exploit prepending to hijack me. So there is no correlation between both uh, metrics. And again, we recommend everyone to create row objects for their prefix, so this will help preventing some hijacking cases. So to conclude uh, this talk, I would like to summarize everything that uh, we did and to take a side in this discussion, because at the beginning I said that we will not take sides, at least during uh, our presentation. So summarizing what we have shown in here regarding the deployments that path prepending is still a very present uh, inbound traffic engineering technique, that there are more than 20,000 prefixes that are uniformly uh, prepended to everyone. And those are kind of something that need some attention. Prepending was important during the first month, so the COVID outbreak, so people can deal with the traffic surge related to a lot of people working from home. Regarding the effectiveness of path prepending, what we found is that if we are using only two locations, the effectiveness is very dependent on the locations. But if we have more than two locations, it works really well to shift traffic. And regarding the security implications, we found that if you are preparing your prefix at least three times, you are like at risk and someone, even someone that's not well connected will be able to hijack your prefix. And also that there are 38,000 prefix with possibly unnecessary prepens. So to take a side in this discussion, we are definitely not advocating against using path prepending because we recognize the value of path prepending as a traffic engineering tool. But we also want to make our point in here and recommend the community to review their prepending policies, removing some unnecessary prependings and as much as possible using small prepend size for inbound traffic engineering. This is a summary of what we are presenting in our IMC paper. So if you are interested, please check our paper. It's available online. Also feel free to contact us. And if you want to discuss about prepending or any other aspect related to internet routing, feel free to contact me or to contact my great colleague Lars, which was also the other first author of this uh, work. And with that, I conclude my talk and happy to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, we are so happy that you could join us uh, and uh, give us this insightful uh, talk. Uh, Let's see uh, what questions the audience has in store for you. Uh, I just switched to the uh, live stream chat. So yeah, so I see a question uh, regarding the network and research uh, networks uh, for universities, the NRN. Do you have any visibility into the prefixes that are um, advertised into the NREN? What do you mean by the the, the academic networks or? Yeah, the academic research universities. Yeah, those networks. Yeah, yeah, we, we have some insights regarding that. We found at least one case in which the NRN was using uniform prepending policies. That was a case in Brazil. And we contacted them, like saying, hey, are you really doing that? And we, unfortunately, we got no answer about that. So we actually we have all the, the names of the ASs that are kind of using prepending and doing like something that we may consider that's not the, the best, best practice about path prepending. But here we decided not to point any specific case, like to not blame and shame anyone. Okay. And uh, I did hear you mention during the talk that the BJP collectors may not be seeing everything. 
So, uh, can you tell us a bit about any kind of verifications that you did to confirm that assumption or that suspicion of yours that you were doing some wrongful inference on the uniform policies? Yeah, sure. Uh, the first thing that we did is that given that we have like more than 400 monitors, in our analysis, we only decided to check the policies of the prefix that we were seeing in at least one third of our BGP monitors. So in that case, we are not saying that an AS was using, for example, a uniform policy because we are seeing that AS, that prefix in only one of our monitors. So you guarantee that we had at least a given visibility for each prefix. And also, as we comment on the talk, we uh, asked three different CDNs to validate our inference saying, if they were seeing something different that we were seeing. So like we approached them and uh, it were they were like two global CDNs and a regional CDN that validate this information for us. And it was approximately like 1% or 2% of the case they were seeing something different for, from what we were seeing. And also we use a set of trace route measurements to using a, a tool called border map IT to identify interconnection links that we may have missed in our BGP data. So while we were not able to infer anything about the announcement in that interconnection link that we found, we were able to at least say that, okay, for this particular AS, we are not seeing all the interconnection links of that AS. But in that case, for the AS is advertising uniformly prepended prefix, the number of new interconnection links was very small. So we kind of did all these okay. steps to validate our findings. Okay, thank you. And and I did receive a clarification to uh, the answer you got about the um, and the uh, academic networks. I think uh, what Adam, uh, who posed the original question, what he was interested in is whether your data set, it includes his preference both to the commercial as well as the academic networks, are both included? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, uh, our data sets, include, like we have the route views, the libraries, and the Isolaro project, and there are a lot of networks that they peer with the, those projects to share their routing tables, and it includes every uh, kind of networks in there. So we have like, I, I wouldn't say complete visibility of the internet, but we see all these 68,000 different ASs in there, and there are prefix announcements. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for coming and uh, delivering this presentation for us for um, Nanog 80.